And we are back to the ZQuest tutorial after a pretty long hiatus. If you are new to this, you should go back and watch all the older ones because I'm going to be covering some advanced material. If you've been watching it since it was first created, you might want to look back at the descriptions of the older ones to see everything that was taught and remind yourself of that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you can just watch this and nothing will be different. But anyway, I'm going to jump right into it. The first thing I'd like to address is, a, is the screen here. Someone pointed out a mistake here. If you'll remember, um, what we do here is you cut the bush to get some bombs, and you move the armos to get a staircase that leads to a cave room on screen zero, 00, which is a secret money type room. The problem here is that if you enter this room multiple times, you'll keep collecting the money. If you use a screen 80 type money room, this won't happen. But I'm guessing that because it's a different D map, it's a cave type, like a normal, it basically not a screen 80, it does that. So there's no real way to avoid this the way that it's currently set up. The reason that we use the screen 00, zero instead of screen 80 is because for it to, for the screen 80 to have the data of how much money to use, you have to have it set in the catch-all which is represented by A, but we have that as a special item because under the bush. So to change that, you'd have to move the bush to a different location, put the bombs and include them in a different way. I'm not going to be changing any of that here because this isn't really meant to be a full playable quest. It's just supposed to teach the basics. So ignoring that, we're going to go to this room, which has been mostly untouched. And I said that we're going to be coming back to this one later, and now we are. The first thing I'd add is a fairy. If you'll remember originally there are some men that can heal you that have fairies on them. So to do this, you want to select a guy and just make it a fairy and the fairy will appear in the middle of the pond. It won't do anything and it won't say anything because you can't have strings show up on an overworld type D-map. And most guys also won't show up either, but a fairy is an exception. Um, but the fairy won't do anything on its own. You actually have to add a flag as well. If you look at your flag list, you'll see one that's just called fairy. And so we're just going to put a couple down there. When you stand on these flag sevens, the fairy will heal you. And there are actually a few quest rules about that. I'm not sure exactly where they are. They don't really matter. Ah, uh, here they are. Heart ring fix, no heart ring. A uh, ring of hearts will appear when you get healed. The heart ring fix will center it around your character. No heart ring, obviously, it will get rid of it. Let's leave it with the heart ring fix so it centers around the character. And that's about it for that. But another thing that we want to do here is, if you'll remember again back to the original quest, level 7 is hidden under a pond, which you dry up by blowing the whistle. In this tutorial quest, we got the whistle from the first level in, I believe it was this room, yes. Um, so we're going to do that here. It's actually really, really simple. To do that, you'll have to use the often overlooked staircase thingy. Let's just place that somewhere on here. And so the screen flag for whistle stairs and you might think that there's something else to it, but there really isn't. It's programmed into ZQuest that on a screen with water type combos, which these should be, it says water, so uh, with water type combos, if there is a stairs, a whistle stair screen flag, the water will dry up and be walkable. In the standard NES tile set and palette and graphics and all that stuff, uh, the water will kind of cycle into a dried out color, but on other palettes it won't be as pretty. It could lead to some very ugly coloring. I'm not sure if it's possible to avoid this actually, but it's not a big deal. So that's really all you need to do is set this thing, which by the way, this thing is only really used for a couple things. It's used for that. And also you can use it as a generic secret flag of sorts. 
Um, if you want to have more than one secret on a screen, I forgot you actually have to set it here. It's the only one under stair. Just get the staircase. If you want to have, say, something that you bomb and something that you push both lead to different things, you can do that by using the stair icon. And I'm going to take a quick break here to avoid some audio desync. Alright, unsurprisingly there already was some desync, but hopefully that will cut it down a little bit by making the segments a little bit shorter. Anyway, here we want to have the staircase lead to a miniature cave. And you do this pretty much the same way that you did it here. We're going to use the exact same D-map. Um, where do we want this to go? Let's put it on screen 24. Normally you'd want to use a different map for this, but it doesn't really matter for the tutorial. So let's go back here. Tile warp. It is an entrance exit type. D map is the cave, and screen is 24. Now let's draw a cave opening of some sort. This is going to look like an overworld screen at first. Let's make it different colors. Because it's a cave, you don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical or anything. I mean, you wouldn't want that for an overworld either, but I tend to do that for some reason. Because I'm weird. Round off the edges. Put these things. Fill in the ground. And then, also, you want to change the palette. So, let's look at this one for reference, see what the palette is. It is A. So, change that. And remember that changing the palette using that option here doesn't actually change it in the game. It's only for display purposes. I'm checking if that looks right. It does. Alright, so, um, set the links location spot tile things, whatever you want to call those. I think you'd only need the green one, but let's put the blue one as well, just to be safe. And we'll need to put them here as well, because the lake will be full of water again. Once you exit, you can put these squares outside of the water. Um, there should be a way for him to get out, so let's see if there's a upward going staircase tile. It seems that there is. We'll put it right... Oh, that doesn't look right. Um, okay, it doesn't seem that there's an upward staircase without a funky tile at, or line at the top, so we'll have to make a new one. So, find it and copy. Let's find an empty place to put one. This is fine. And get rid of this, because it looks awkward. Fill in that, I guess. And that looks fairly presentable, so make a new tile. Or make a new combo, I mean. I'm sorry. Select the staircase tile. It should be fully walkable, so have no pink on it. And the type should be stairs. And place that next to the place where our link appears. So let's actually shift this over a little bit. Okay, that looks fine to me. Um, we should put in some enemies here. Caves generally have bats, so let's put in those. Uh, level color, I wonder what those would look like on this. Also, let's put in one that's actually called a bat. The bat is actually a different enemy. It is not killed in one hit, like the keys are, and it's also one of the very few enemies, maybe even the only enemy, that is damaged by the boomerang, by which I mean it does take damage from it instead of being stunned, but it's not a one-hit kill. It depends on the level of your boomerang. But those are very annoying, so I'm only going to put in one. And so I guess... Since I'm running low on time, I'll end it here. Next time, we'll add some more screens to the cave. It's going to lead to a new area. Also, you don't want to forget to set the warp leading back out of the cave. 
So it leads to screen 78. And set the tile warp for it. Same as before. Entrance exit. Overworld DMAP. And all's good. So I'll save. And uh, when you join me next time, we'll be continuing the cave. Maybe adding a potion shop. We'll see.